Hey YouTube fragrance community, welcome to my top 20 niche list for fall 2015. First and foremost, I gotta wish all of you, all of my subscribers, a happy new year. Hopefully all went well for all of you. Um, I'm hoping all the best for all of you in 2016. And as you saw in my trailer, I got big things for all of you. But I'm playing catch up today. Today is the day that I'm gonna get rid of my fall lists. And tomorrow's a new day, I'm gonna get rid of those winter lists, so I'm out of 2015. So stay tuned, you're gonna see a lot of top 20 lists going through this January just to, I'm always playing catch up, but I'm going to be playing catch up a little bit more uh, to be in season. So top 20, the reason why you're here, top 20 niche list for fall 2015, what did I wear for the fall season, guys? Um, the theme here is my Gourmand Tooth came out this year. Um, you're going to see still a lot of smoke and uh, a lot of, you know, uh, smoky fragrances, a lot of amber-based fragrances, but my Sweet Tooth prevails <laughs> in this list. Um, you're going to see a lot of boozy, gourmandish fragrances that are going to win in this list, big time. Um, so let's get into it. Now let's get into it. Let's take a look at my top 20. On number 20, we have a comeback kid. Don't call it a comeback. Well, maybe you should. At number 20 from the House of Bond, number 9. This guy hasn't seen, hasn't even sniffed the top 20 list in at least two to three years on my channel. This is New Harlem. One of the better releases from the House of Bond, number 9. Um, this guy is breakfast in a bottle. If you haven't heard, yes, I'm going back in 2010, 2009 here on my channel. You're going to see familiar faces like New Harlem and Chergui. Yeah. Now, New Harlem, I have a review on my channel on it um, if you wish to take a look at it. But it is breakfast in a bottle, guys. Um, just think either pancakes or waffles, either or. Uh, heavy syrup, I like to think maple syrup, um, very syrupy fragrance with a little bit of a coffee uh, undertone in this fragrance on the side. Um, I like to say mochaccino, it has kind of like a milky, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of foam on top, a little bit of that in the dry down. Um, very, very nicely done. Um, the nose behind this is Maurice Roussel. He is a genius with the note of lavender. I hate lavender, but Roussel makes it work for me. He knows um, this one and many others from uh, from that nose. Really, he likes to really, he blends them so well um, with other notes. Great blend here, New Harlem, by the way. I don't know how he made it like this. There's other fragrances that try to make this kind of theme, but fail to do so at this kind of level. New Harlem's the only one that makes it on this on this level. Now, this one, funny enough, you can overdose on New Harlem. Yes, it's that sweet. Um, a lot of owners of New Harlem can probably attest to what I'm saying here. Um, you can get sick of this fragrance very, very easily. I'm sure a lot of you have actually sold a bottle. Um, this is one of those that you kind of have to put it away for months on end um, and, and revisit it and you're going to feel the magic again of this particular fragrance. And that's what I did. You haven't seen this in a top 20 list in a long, long time. There's a reason for that. I kind of got sick of it. Now I'm back into the love side and as you can see, it's on my top 20 list and I fully enjoy it. And that's why I love having a large collection like I have here. Um, instead of selling off the bottle, I actually have it available to me when I feel like going back to it. Um, a masterpiece in my eyes new harlem a great one at number 20 now at number 19 this is from the house of a perfumery general this fragrance house is absolutely a great niche fragrance house reason why mainly is cost perfumery general are um, dare i say affordable in the niche game really great pricing huge lineup and you will find a bottle in here or a fragrance uh, pardon my french here um that is going to be up your alley. Um, this one right here at number 19, one of my favorites from the house, Kose. Uh, Kose has a very interesting note breakdown. Go on Fragrance, go on Base Notes, go on your favorite blogger's uh, website and go check out the note breakdown on this one. This scent does not disappoint. When you're taking a look at note breakdowns, sometimes you do get disappointed. This one does not. It has heavy patchouli, coffee bean, Almost has a, if I have to give a color to this fragrance, it would have to be a dark green color to it. Um, it's very comforting. There's a little bit of spice here, a little bit of kick from the pepper. Um, some woods. The introduction almost reminds me of a wet hemp menthol-like opening. Really, really interesting. 
I mean, not, it's not for everybody. Um, in the dry down, it starts drying up, getting a little more smoky. Um, it's hard to wear for some people, but it's interesting as hell. I love it. At number 19, Cosé, um, one of those fragrances that I really love wearing in these really cold weather. Uh, Cosé, a good one. Go check that one out. At number 19, at number 18, from the house of Enic Goutal, um, this is a mirror based fragrance. I love mirror, and this is Mir Ardente. Mira Dump, very resinous. And when I mean resin, um, you guys know about resins. Uh, it's almost so real that it's almost sticky to, to smell this fragrance. It has a sticky feel to it. Really weird. Beautiful beeswax note. Uh, Mirror's great with vanilla. There's, a, there's vanilla in here, kind of give it some sweetness. So you're going to get a little bit of sweetness with some smoke. Um, works very well in here, I think. Um, one of the best from the house of Goutal, Mir Ardente at number 18. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this one has been discontinued from the house, unfortunately, but one to get your nose on at number 18. Now at number 17, e underrated fragrance house, an underrated juice. This one, under the radar, I don't know what's going on with the frag home when you're not talking about this particular fragrance because it is a great fragrance. It's uh, almost a little low on the totem pole in the top 20. It should be much higher on my list. Um, it's one of those fragrances that the, it's funny enough, the bottle's not sexy enough. It doesn't grab my attention. I know that's a weird thing to say, but it is. Um, it, it's a very plain bottle presentation and it's very small, so it kind of gets lost in this huge collection. Flashier bottles kind of get my attention. Um, shame on me, but it is what it is. This fragrance, I have to put it front and center uh, because I absolutely adore it. At number 17, it is uh, from the uh, from the house of Naomi Goodsir, and this is Bois de Cesse. Now, Bois de Cesse, incense-based fragrance, guys. Lots of smoke in this one. Tobacco, whiskey. Smells very ashy. Um, it has that ashy uh, smell to it, ashtray-like, um, very warming. Um, one of my favorite smoky fragrances of all time. I keep forgetting about it, but I need to get my nose back on to this one a little bit more. This this fall, I kind of put the bottle where I can reach it. Um, it's usually actually in my uh, fragrance cooler that's right over here. Um, I need to put it in one of these big boys so it's right in front of me. Um, but this one deserves so much praise. The smoke, the woods are the central notes in this fragrance. Go check out this house. This house is criminally underrated, not only on YouTube, but base notes, fragrance, things like that. Go check out the house. Um, multiple scents that are absolutely gorgeous, but this one um, is the only bottle I own from the brand. Very, very good stuff. At number 17. Now, at number 16, we got a our first um, returnee from last year's list. It was number 6 last year, dropping down 10 spots at number 16, but still, if you make a top 20 on my list, that means you're, you're good. And this is Olivier Turbano's best creation ever. If you love smoke like I do, Black Tourmaline. Black Tourmaline. Oh, oh, oh. Mwah. This stuff is gorgeous. Smoke. Smoke. And dare I say it enough, more smoke. It's a hidden gem. Good amount of woods. Incense. Now, woods and incense, I own, holy freak, I own probably two dozen bottles that have woods and incense. You know, that's that's some of my favorite notes put together. Um, and I love smoke. And this is one of the best in the game. This fragrance, trust me. Since since I own so many, you, you gotta trust me. <laughs> I love this one. It's ashy, it's woody. It almost has like an oily feel to it also. Um, really interesting stuff. Um, I really need to get my review on on this one. Um, <laughs> Fragcom, listen up. This one's a really good one. Black Tourmaline at number 16. At number 15, let's go with Uncle Serge. Uncle Serge never disappoints in fall and winter. This one is uh, Fumeri Turk. Now, Fumini took a sweet honey tobacco based fragrance. Um, again, it has this ashy quality. I love this ashtray like feel. I know it doesn't sound appealing when I'm saying it. Um, I'm saying it right now and I'm like, that sounds not uh, <laughs> interesting at all. But my niche heads are going to know what I'm talking about. One of the best from the house of Uncle Serge. Love the depth in Fumini took. You can faintly smell different notes giving the scent a, a little bit of edge beside the central notes. I absolutely love 
uh, how Sheldrick does that. Um, Thumidi Turk, one of the best from the brand. Go check that one out. At number 15. Now at number 14, we're going to take a look at L'Artisan Parfumeur. This fragrance doesn't get as much love as many others from the brand. Um, it's a huge brand, a lot of fragrances available to the no uh, noses out there. But this one, Havana Vani, also known as Vani uh, Absolument, I believe. Um, this one, very much not really talked about either. Um, brings out kind of like a boozy vanilla scent with a mild dried fruit and some tobacco. Um, what a, a great blend. Um, it's a unique vanilla and hence the reason I think it didn't sell very well. It's not a, one of their top sellers. It's one that really flopped on the market. Um, but I find it an interesting scent and I think it's one of the most underappreciated uh, from the brand. Um, really a good one at number 14. If you kind of like Spiritus du Blaveni, it's around that genre. Not as great, but around that genre. If you like vanillas, um, Vanna Vanny is actually pretty solid. And at number 14, now at number 13, can I say, don't call it a comeback again? <laughs> New Harlem came back. This one's coming back in my top 20 list. Not as high as it used to be. I believe this used to be actually uh, number one on my top 20 niche falls way back when I started. But always a great one from Uncle Serge. Shergi now. Shergi hasn't been talked about that much now. It's kind of the hype on it kind of died down, you know, that was so 2009 mark. But Shergi, another scent making a comeback on my list. Dry Hino with honeyed sweetness is absolutely gorgeous. One of the best and a good reason why it's the most talked about from the brand. Um, when you go take a look at Serge Tan's lineup, you should go Shergi first and then go see the rest of the lineup. He has, it's not only a Shergi fragr uh, fragrance house, you gotta go and delve into that brand. They have absolutely great fragrances. But Shergi, it gets a lot of hate lately. I hear it's been reformulated. Sucks. Happy I still have my old school bottle with the super dark juice. I love it. Um, that's why I keep my bottles. Happy I still have it. Such a comforting, warming scent. Shergi is absolutely gorgeous. I want to open it. Oh, yeah. This is a, a, a gorgeous scent. Shergi at number 13. Um, great for fall at number 13. Now, number 12, we're going to go with the house of Montal. Montal is uh, one of those houses that has a hard time hitting my top 20s. I don't reach for them that much. Um, I, I wear them from time to time, but it's not one of those that I'm going to be constantly going back to them. I'm, it's just that kind of house. But this one, at number 12, Oud Leather. I'm not sure if it's the first time making a top 20 list, but I love the leather-based fragrances from Montal. That one and Oud Cuir d'Arabi. Oud leather has that rough and tumble leather like Tuscan leather. Um, it really does remind me of Tuscan leather quite a bit. I feel this one shows more of the smokiness of the leather, more of the roughness to it, much better than Tuscan leather. Um, it has a fruity aspect in, in the introduction just like Tuscan leather, but it's not um, exactly like Tuscan leather. I, I hate comparing two fragrances like that. You know, it's a substitute. No, it's not. Um, Oud leather stands on its own. Very good uh, release from the House of Motel. At number 12. At number 11, let's go smooth. This is super smooth, amazing juice. <laughs> um, was number 4 last year, so we got a returnee. Went from number 4 to number 11. Still decent. This is from the House of Zerjoff, and this is their smooth ass rich wood. <laughs> rose, sandalwood, well, sandalwood based. Lots of rose in here with a hint of patch. A little bit of patchouli in here. It's the smoothest fragrance on this list, bar none. Um, one of the smoothest sandalwoods on the market, bar none. Richwood is, dare I say it, it's very expensive juice. I think a bottle of this is like six, seven hundred dollars, so pricey juice. But, dare I say, worth every penny, because I've been wearing the crap out of it. Richwood, I love it, and I can't go without it in my collection. At number 11. Now let's start the top 10. This is the big boys. These are the ones that I reach for. Way more than these. These might get like three or four wearings during the fall. These top ten guys are getting, you know, five and up as far as wearings goes. I, I love wearing these particular fragrances this year. So let's take a look at number ten. Number ten from the House of Roja Dove. Again, that is the House du Jour. Everybody's hyping Roja this, Roja that. Again, you notice I only have two bottles. One in my hand one right here. Um, I think that's about it for me unless I find something else from the brand. But... I think these are the two jewels. This one made the list at number 10, Creation E. 
also known as Enigma. Uh, Creation E, um, my boozy tones have been inkling, I guess. Uh, this is a cognac boozy intro with spices, some florals in here. The blend's outstanding. You gotta admit, solid vanilla backbone too. I personally think that this is the best from the brand. Amber Oud's pretty good too. And obviously these two are very, very good. But at number 10, um, I love these uh, boozy type of fragrances this year. At number 10, Creation E. Now number 9 was number 11 last year. So it squeaks into the top 10. Congratulations. It is from the house of Slumber House. This is one of the houses um, that actually has two fragrances in the top 10. Galais has two and Slumber House has two. Um, so you're going to see a little bit of these two houses uh, peppered in my top 10. I love two outstanding fragrance houses. At number nine, we got Jake. And this fragrance, guys, dark green juice. You spray this on a piece of paper, it's going to go green. So don't wear a white button-down shirt with Jake. <laughs> um, this fragrance, bold, unique. It's tobacco-based. Um, think cigar smoke. It has a smokiness to it. It's rich. It has a great blend. Um, that excites me. Longevity and projection. Outstanding. Uh, I can't ask for more. This reminds me when you get too close to a smoky fire. You know you got a smoky fire. It gets a little bit wet and it's got a little bit of smoke coming out. Or barbecue pit. Something like that. And you inhale some of the smoke. Not the reaction of inhaling smoke. That sucks. But the actual essence of it you get that burning sensation here and this remind me of Le Labo's Patchouli 24 so if you own Patchouli 24 um, this is around the same genre area if you don't like it then you're not gonna like this is it's it's really classified in my personal opinion as a uh, daring unique bold set and you need to like to smell a little different um, this is right up my alley I love it at number nine at number eight we got one of my favorite, my one of my top compliment getters this year. This thing has been going through the roof as a compliment getter. It's from the Hermes Essence line from Hermes, and this is Ambre Nargile. Now Ambre Nargile, another comeback kid. This back in the day, if you go back in uh, Rubs 08 history, 2009, 2010, 2011, um, you're gonna see Ambre Nargile in these fall lists. Very, very high actually. So it's coming back to me. Um, compliment factors outstanding with this one. I can't believe it. This year it's probably number one on my list. The apple pie of the fragrance game. It's warming, it's comforting. Great longevity and projection with this one. The cinnamon and caramel in this fragrance is to die for. And one of my most complimented of all time. So if, you, if that's a big factor for you, this is one of the best gourmand fragrances on my skin um, as far as compliments go. Big time. At number eight. At number seven, again, something that has been uh, peppered in my old school list. Uh, it still sticks around. It's one of my favorite fragrances of all time, to be honest. From the house of Guerlain, Tonka Imperial. Tonka Imperial, the best Tonka bean based scent on the market today. Yes, bar none. I know everybody's talking about Feb Delicieux. It's the new kid. It's the shiny new toy on the block. But guess what? You can't fool me. Who has the best Tonka bean in the game? It is from the house of Guerlain. It shows so much of the Tonka. Trust me, you want to go see my review, I tell you guys how much of the Tonka Bean. It's a very um, complex note, and Guerlain has shown all the facets of it. The opening, the cherry, the opening cherry from the Tonka, and the Tonka Imperial is unmatched. <laughs> and it works so well in the fall. I love the cherry on top of Tonka Imperial. Absolutely bonkers. At number seven. At number six, we're sticking with Guerlain. It was number 10 last year. My favorite vanilla-based fragrance. It is Spiritus du Bleveni, number 10 last year, moves up at number 6 this year. Um, again, talking about unmatched in the game, one if not the best vanilla on the market. This is bar none for uh, vanilla based fragrances, I haven't. Um, this one kind of sets the bar for all vanilla based scents. Um, if you can't, you know, run in the same tracksuit as du Bleveni, get off the, <laughs> get off the running track. Um, only few come close to this and many fail. At number six, it's one of the best in the game. Spiritus Double Veni. Um, I have the original bottle and I'm trying to keep this dark juice as much as I can at number six. Now let's take a look at my top five. These guys were my bread and butter this fall. Um, again, this list, just a FYI, this list uh, for fall, for these Canadian fall, 
Canadian winters, this can be interchangeable. Um, I'm used to like minus 40 weather when winter comes. It's actually been very, very mild here in Canada, but I can wear these in the winter too. So don't, don't be shy. Just because it's the fall list, this can be great for fall. Right now in January 2016, you can wear all of these. These are all January approved. <laughs> so my top five, my top five from last year's top 20, or let's say my top five, it has drastically changed. You see a lot of these fragrances haven't been in last year's list. Um, I don't know what happened to me, but um, my number one from last year is completely gonzo from the list. Windsor from Creed is right over here. Black of Gunnel is right here. Black of Gunnel are going to make the list. Now again, my list aren't about quality. If I go with absolute quality, my favorite fragrances for fall, well, I'm going to be lying to you just because these are the ones that I've been wearing. This is what I'm telling you. Um, so it doesn't really matter about quality anything. It's just about my taste. I, I, I gravitate towards some scents and some get completely ignored. Black of Gunnel got ignored. There's some other smoky scents that I absolutely loved. Black of Gunnel's on the back burner. So let's get into it. My top five was number 13. Uh, number five was number 13 last year. So hell of a jump for this guy. This is from Histoire de Parfum, my favorite from the house. Bar none, um, they have some great fragrances. Don't get me wrong, they got some great, crazy fragrances. But this one is uh, one that I got in New York. It's got a soft spot for me. Abram. Abram. Um, oh, one of the best ambers on the market today. Complexity is through the freaking roof with this one. Castorium in here kind of gives it a little bit of edge, makes it unique. Um, animal lick fragrances just do it for me um, this one has that amber animalic uh, castorium great great stuff one of the best from East to all the Parfum. at number five a room's great at number four number seven last year moved up in the top five this is from the house of Parfumum Roma Roma Arso Arso this is the Christmas tree on fire um, smoke in a bottle. Arso is absolutely bonkers as far as the smoke goes. Uh, longevity and projection pff, through the roof. Um, great woods. Some smoke. Lots of smoke. This is the Christmas tree killer in a bottle. So I like to wear this after Christmas too. <laughs> At number four. At number three, again, uh, dropped a little bit. It was number two last year. So we got a um, only one of my top fives. Stuck around in the top five this year. And this guy is, I'm not going to call it the Black Afghano killer. Because Black Afghano has gone from this top 20 list. No, I absolutely, this is this is liquid gold. But this is, I'm not saying they're the same. But the when I feel like wearing this kind of scent, I'm gravitating towards this one. From Slumber House Narn. Now, longevity and projection on this one. Nuts, bonkers, out of this world. Great pine note with smoke and resins. This is the Dark Force fragrance of all Dark Force fragrances, and there's a lot of them. This almost replaces Black Afghano. It basically did. Such a dark scent. Um, gorgeous. Uh, I, I can't say any more from the House of Slumber House. Um, Slumber House is a absolutely gorgeous house. If you haven't tested out again, I got Jake, I got Norm here, I got a whole bunch of other ones down over here that you can't see off camera, but... Um, Really a house that you guys should discover. If you like stuff that's really dark, strange, um, you like heavy resins, uh, go check them out. Great. At number three. <laughs> At number two. This one was number eight last year. Moved up quite a bit. You go from 8 to 2, that's a big thing. That means you're steadily in my rotation. You, I've probably worn you at least several times this year. This is from the house of By Killian. No, it's not Back to Black. It is Apple Brandy. Apple Brandy, this fragrance is made for fall, guys. <sighs> great apple note. <laughs> um, the apple note in this fragrance, great. The boozy hint in here is amazing. Um, it almost reminds me of apple cider, and you know, fall apple cider go hand in hand. Um, it's very fall-like. It's absolutely gorgeous from the House of By Killian. Actually, one of the rest releases. Um, the apple brandy, great. At number two, number one. We got new number one, as I've already told you guys. This fragrance did not make the list at all last year, so this guy just went ping way up there. This is not a stranger to any of my top 20 lists. Um, it has made it in the past. Um, it just didn't make it in my fall last year. This is from the house of Kriegler. Yeah. Established Cognac. 
Establish cognac. Cognac, caramel, sweetness, apples. Um, this blend is absolutely amazing. It's boozy. Um, my boozy lovers and my gourmand lovers. You guys, that's, that's me in a nutshell, okay? If you guys are like me, <laughs> you're going to love this one. This is... The cognac is to die for. The booziness is absolutely just enough. Um, and it just kind of reminds me of a, a an apple, like a liqueur. Like it has that syrupy liqueur-like feel to it. Apple infused. Absolutely gorgeous. Amazing. Very much worthy of this number one spot. If you have to check out Kriegler as a house, I got three of them. I got one, two here, and I got this one. Um, this is the fragrance to check out established cognac bar none um these two are very much interchangeable by the way number one and number two um they kind of give you the same kind of vibe not the smell but they're made for the same kind of if you feel like booziness in an apple these two give you the same kind of thing um so they're interchangeable i prefer this one obviously hence number one but uh these two gorgeous for fall so guys Thank you for watching. I think this one ran a little long. I like to ramble a little bit on this one. But uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about my top 20. It has been revamped from what I, I see here. Not too many from last year's list. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think of my new number one. Crown the King. And uh, let me know what you guys wore during the fall for niche. Any uh, suggestions here that you think that I should be uh, checking out. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good one.